have stemmed. Please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 No, 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 no. He has the hand back. So, he has the a little more to the voice of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Can you test this? Is this working out? Hare Krishna. No. no. It's, oh, at the bottom, I'll switch it. Switch it on. And you have to be careful how you want to use it. It squeaks easily. It squeaks easily. Ah. Oh. This is the key is necessary. The deal energy cooperates. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 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 Okay, we will start. Hare Krishna. Once, in Satya Yu, thousands of centuries ago, there lived a demoniac man by the name of Hiranyakashipu, who wanted to be unconquerable and free from old age and to be the emperor of the entire universe. Therefore, he began performing austerities. Extremely disturbed because of Hiranyakashipu's severe penances, all the demigods left their planets and went to Brahma Loka. O oh, master of the universe, because of the fire emanating from Hiranyakashipu's head, as a result of his severe austerities, we have left our planets and have come to you. If you think it proper, kindly stop these disturbances before all your obedient subjects are annihilated. Lord Brahma, accompanied by great sages, immediately started for the place where Hiranyakashipu was performing his penances. At first, he couldn't see anyone, for Hiranyakashipu's body was covered by an anthill and by grass and bamboo sticks. Then, Lord Brahma and the demigods spotted him, resembling a cloud-covered sun, eating the entire world by his austerity. Oh, son of Kashyap Muni, please, get up. Get up. All good fortune unto you. I have been very much astonished to see your endurance. In spite of being eaten and bitten by all kinds of worms and ants, you are keeping your life there circulating within your bones. No one previously could perform such severe austerities to, to sustain his life without even drinking water for 100 celestial years. For this reason, I am now prepared to give you all benedictions according to your desire. Your audience with me will not go in vain. Then Lord Brahma sprinkled transcendental water from his water pot upon Hiranyakashipur's body. As soon he, as he was sprinkled with the water, Hiranyakashipu arose, endowed with a full body, with limbs so strong they could bear the striking of a thunderbolt. With physical strength and a bodily luster resembling molten gold, he emerged from the anthill, a completely young man. Extremely pleased, Hiranyakashipu offered thunderbolts to Lord Brahma. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord, within this universe. <coughs> o oh, best of the givers of benediction, if you will kindly grant me what I desire, please let me not meet death from any living being created by you. Grant me that I not die within or outside any residence during the daytime or at night, nor on the ground or in the sky. Grant me that I won't be killed by any weapon, nor by any human being or animal. Grant me further that I not be killed by any demigod or demon or by any great snake from the lower planets. Give me sole lordship over the living entities and presiding deities. Furthermore, give me all mystic powers attained by long austerities and the practice of yoga. O oh, Hiranyakashipu, these benedictions for which you have asked are difficult to obtain for most men. Nonetheless, O oh my son, I shall grant you them. Then, 
Lord Brahma departed being worshipped by Hiranyakashipu and being praised by great sages. The demon, having thus been blessed by Lord Brahma and having acquired a lustrous golden body, continued to remember the death of his brother and his enmity towards Lord Vishnu. He became the conqueror of the entire universe. Fearful and disturbed and unable to find any shelter, the demigods at last surrendered to the supreme personality of Godhead, Vishnu. We offer our respectful obeisances onto that direction where the supreme personality of Godhead is situated, where the great saintly persons go, and from which having gone, they never return. We humbly request, dear Lord, for Hiranyakashipu's immediate demise as the disturbance he is creating is too much for us to bear. Oh, Davis, do not fear all good fortune unto you. I know all about the activities of Hiranyakashipu and shall surely stop them very soon. Please wait patiently until that time. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead thus reassured all the demigods, they offered their respectful obeisances unto him and returned, confident that the demon was now practically dead. <coughs> Hiranyakashipu had four wonderful, well-qualified sons, of whom the one named Prahlad was the best. Indeed, Prahlad was a reservoir of all transcendental qualities, being an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. Although born in a family of Azuras, he himself was not a demon, but a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Unlike the other Azuras, he was never envious of Vaishnavas and never agitated when put into danger. From the very beginning of his childhood, he was uninterested in childish playthings. Indeed, he gave them up altogether and remained silent, being fully absorbed in God consciousness. Because of his spiritual advancement, he sometimes cried, sometimes laughed, sometimes sang loudly, and sometimes began to dance in ecstasy. Sometimes, feeling the touch of Lord's lotus hands, he became jubilant and remained silent, his hairs standing on end and tears gliding down from his half-closed eyes because of his love for the Lord. Prahlad Maharaj was already educated in devotional life, but his father sent him to Nanda and Amaka, the two sons of Sukracharya, to be educated. Prahlad heard the topics of politics and economics taught by his teachers, but he thought that politics involves someone considering someone as a friend and someone else as an enemy, and thus he did not like it. Once, Hiranyakashipu took Prahlad on his lap. My dear son, please let me know what you think is the best of all the subjects you have studied from your teachers. Oh, best of the Asuras, as far as I have learned from my guru, any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life is certainly embarrassed by anxiety because of having fallen in a dark well where there is no water but only suffering. One should give up this position and go to the forest and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of God. <coughs> Thus is the intelligence of children spoiled by the words of the enemy. <laughs> <laughs>